To God be the glory. Last November 1, Brother Bong Boy, one of our brothers here, he is a radio announcer and he has a radio program. And he called me up and said, Pastor, meron po akong katanungan sa inyo because people are also asking me. And so I said, what's your question, brother? And he said, Pastor, kailan ba talaga nag-umpisa yung paniniwala tungkol sa purgatorio? Kasi November 1, di ba? Kalag-kalag. So, purgatorio. And I told him that historically, during the time of the Jews, especially during the time of Jesus Christ and the apostles, the concept of purgatory was not existing. Wala po. Because if you remember when Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross and there was a criminal who said to him, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. And also, Jesus told a story about Lazarus and the rich man. And when Lazarus died, immediately the angels brought him to the bosom of Abraham. So during the time of Jesus Christ, during the time of the disciples, the concept of purgatory was not there. But 400 years later, it started to be developed, especially when St. Augustine, I don't know if some of you are familiar with him, he is one of the great leaders of the church in the, the fourth century. He was one of the bishops in uh, a big church in North Africa, and he was able to lead many people. In fact, he wrote many books. He was the one who really made a good theological presentation about original sin. Kaya kung narinig ninyo ang original sin, it was St. Augustine who started putting that into writing. He also was a good theologian in the sense that he was able to distinguish between the divinity of Jesus Christ and his humanity. So we owe a lot to St. Augustine. And if you have visited the University of San Agustin, that university is being run by monks, Augustinian monks. They are followers of St. Augustine. And so this person, so brilliant, and he was a devoted Christian, although when he was young, he lived a life of sin. But when he was converted to Christ, he served Christ faithfully. But he had a struggle. Yung pong struggle niya ay ganito. He was looking at God, holy, righteous, sinless. And here is man, a sinner, lost. Sa kanyang isipan, pag namatay yung tao, bagamat tumanggap na siya sa Panginoon na kanyang Diyos at tagapagligtas, he is not yet cleansed. He is not yet purified because he belongs to the city of men and he is not qualified to enter into the city of God. And so he started thinking, Dapat merong place of purging. And that's where the word purgatory came from. Na bago ka makapasok sa langit, dadaan ka muna sa place of purging. And let me just make it clear to you that in the mind of St. Augustine, only believers in Jesus Christ can enter Purgatory in preparation to enter heaven. Unbelievers, when they die, 
they go directly to hell. So purgatory is only for believers. Believers na hindi pa masyadong mature, tumanggap nga sa Panginoon, pero bihira namang magsimba. They go to church once a year, Biyernes Santo. May mga ganyan man, di ba? Tumanggap sa Panginoon, pero bihirang mag go to church. May mga bisyo pa. So in his mind, pag namatay yung, yung taong yun, hindi siya tatanggapin ka agad sa langit. Kailangan dumaan mo na siya sa lugar ng cleansing. Now, it's a very interesting idea. In fact, it seems to be logical. Because, for example, bago kayo pumunta dito sa church tonight, Naligo mo na kayo. Nagbihis mo na kayo. Because you do not feel fit to enter into the presence of God na kagigising nyo lang, galing kayo sa trabaho, your, your body is dirty, your clothes are dirty, and dyan, just papasok ka dito. So it's, to me, it's logical that a sinful, unrighteous man should go through a process of cleansing after he dies before he enters heaven. Ang problema lang, it's not in the scriptures. It's a good idea, but it's not in the scriptures. And what complicated the problem was when St. Augustine died nung namatay siya. That was 423 A.D. when he died. And then some people after him picked up his idea. Sabi na, Ta- parang tama yata si St. Augustine. Na hindi pwedeng pumasok yung tao doon sa kaharian ng Diyos. Pag namatay siya, kailangan muna dumaan siya doon sa lugar ng paglilinis. And so, 580, 600, 700. May mga tao na they started developing the idea of St. Augustine. And sabi nila, kung meron ngang lugar na papasok yung mga namatay na believers and they should be purged, cleansed, purified, the question is, who is in charge of the place? sino ang inkargado. So nag-usap-usap sila. And they decided that the church should be the administrator of purgatory. And the leaders of the church holds the key to purgatory. Kaya bago ka mamatay, kausapin mo muna ako para ibigay ko sa'yo yung susi. Hindi ka magkakapasok magpalakas ka muna sa akin. Because I, if I am the one holding the key, then I have great power. I can deny your request or I can let you go. And the second question is, who determines how long you will stay in purgatory? Who will determine? The church. And the leaders of the church determine kung medyo salawayon ka, bagamat Christian ka, 20 years ka doon, bago ka makagraduate. But, you can accelerate your stay in purgatory if, when you die, your loved ones will pray for you at least 40 days. Para mas madali yung stay mo doon, hindi ka magtatagal accelerate. And then, napag-isipan nila na mas mapadali yung pagtira mo doon if people will offer, magbibigay ng offering, the bigger the offering, the better because mas madali kang makagraduate. And so they started adding and adding until such time na sabi nila, Maraming mga namatay na napakabait, sobra-sobra yung kanilang kabaitan, we will borrow from them so that itong kapatid natin na nasa purgatorio ay mas madali siyang makagraduate. Unfortunately, brothers and sisters, 
those ideas are not in scriptures. Anong nasa scriptures? Kindly open your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter 2, beginning with verse 11 to 21. Ito yung salita ng Panginoon. And this is what we should follow and we should obey. Galatians chapter 2, beginning with verse 11, it says, Apostle Paul is writing to the Christians in the church of Galatia. When Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belong to the circumcision group. The other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. When I saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter in front of them all, You are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile and not like a Jew. How is it then that you force Gentiles to follow Jewish customs? We who are Jews by birth and not sinful Gentiles know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put on our faith in Christ Jesus that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because the works of the law, no one will be justified. But if in seeking to be justified in Christ, we find ourselves also among the sinners, doesn't that mean that Christ promotes sin? Absolutely not. If I rebuild what I destroyed, then I really would be a lawbreaker. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. Let's give God a clap offering. To God be the glory. This is the word of the Lord. The problem that Apostle Paul faced was that even during his time, and even among the disciples, there was this tendency to think that we can gain righteousness by our own selves. Na kailangang gumawa tayo ng isang bagay, dalawang bagay, tatlong bagay, so that righteousness will be attained. Kasi ang sa panahon ni Apostle Paul, the Jewish people look at the Gentiles, and the Gentiles to them, were unfit and qualified to enter into the kingdom of God. Kailangan mo nang ang mga Gentiles ay magiging katulad nila before they can be accepted before God. And Apostle Paul emphasized at least two things in this passage. The first is that God's gift of righteousness is unconditional. It's not based on whether you are a Jew or a Gentile, whether you are educated or uneducated, rich or poor. God's gift of righteousness is unconditional. 
You don't have to be like me in order to be acceptable to God. God can grant to you the gift of righteousness where you are. Kasi ang tingin ng mga Hudyo, sila lang ang katanggap-tanggap sa Panginoon. The Gentiles, because of their dietary customs, the Gentiles eat everything. Lahat ng creeping things, lahat ng lumilipad, lahat ng lumalangoy, the Gentiles eat that. The Jewish people, they think they are better because they have these systems that they follow, requirements and regulations. But it is very clear in the passage that we have read that the gift of righteousness is unconditional. Kaya mga kapatid, dapat tayo maging masaya. Dapat tayo mag-rejoice. It's because when Jesus Christ came, the righteousness that we needed most is already provided. Hindi na kailangan meron pa tayong gagawin to be righteous before God because His gift of righteousness is without conditions. The second thing I notice in this passage is that not only that the gift of righteousness is unconditional, the gift of righteousness is also unending. If our righteousness is based on what we do or what others do for us, that righteousness will end. It's limited because we are limited on what we can do. But since our righteousness is in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is eternal, then the gift of righteousness is unending. I think many of you have heard that Chairman Nur Miswari was granted partial liberty and he was invited by President Duterte to visit Malacanang. He was given six months of freedom. After that, we do not know whether the warrant of arrest will still be implemented. But at least for six months, he is free. But that's limited. If our righteousness is limited, then we will always be insecure. But since the gift of righteousness is unending, it is based not on anything material, anything of this world, but on Jesus Christ, then we can be sure that our righteousness will go on and on and on because it is based not on anything else but on Jesus Christ. I think I have said this several occasions that when we face the judge, there will be at least three surprises. The first surprise is that when we face the judge, some people whom we think should be there are not there. Yun, magugulat talaga tayo. Bakit wala siya dito? Siya yung valedictoria namin. Bakit wala siya dito? The second surprise would be there are people whom we thought should not be there are there. Ibat na dito ka. Dapat sa impierno ka. Uh, we thought he would not be there, but he is there. I remember when we were in college, some people could barely pass. 74.9. Ginawa na lang 75. Pero 10 years later, 20 years later, nagiging district ministry supervisor. Bakit ikaw? But the third surprise would be when we go there, we face the judge, we expect to be there, and we are not there. If our righteousness is only based on what we do, we will not be accepted. We may think we are righteous already. We may think we are perfect already. But it is only God who can declare us righteous through His Son, Jesus Christ. But every gift 
will only be experienced when you accept it. A story is told about a young man who was caught and found guilty of murder many years ago, and he was sentenced to death. His mother and father loved him with all their hearts, and they appealed to everyone they met for leniency for their son. So itong young man was caught and he was sentenced to die. Pero yung mga magulang, mahal na mahal nila yung kanilang anak, kahit kriminal, di ba? Marinig natin sa, makikita natin sa TV, bakit nyo naman pinatay? O alam namin, nagbebenta ng droga yan, pero bakit nyo naman pinatay? Kinulong nyo na lang sana. So, mga ganong klaseng dialogue ng mga parents. So this uh, father and mother went around and they appealed to everyone na sana babaan na lang yung sentensya. Without any results, they finally appealed to the governor of their state for a lesser sentence. Yes, our, our son is a criminal, pero baka pwedeng huwag na lang death sentence. Life imprisonment na lang. Tatanggapin namin yan. But to everyone's surprise, the governor granted this young man a full and unconditional pardon. A pardon is a document that essentially erases a crime, making it as if it never happened. Sa so kapag isang tao ay nakatanggap ng pardon, erase lahat. And if you heard about what happened to Robin Padilla, na in 1996, he was arrested for illegal possession of firearms. And he served for two years. And then ex-president Fidel Ramos granted him partial pardon. Pinalabas na siya sa bilangguan, pero hindi siya maka-apply for a passport, hindi siya maka-apply for a license, hindi siya makaboto, hindi siya makatakbo as a candidate. So, just recently, President Duterte gave him full unconditional pardon, restoring all his privileges and rights. So ito yung nangyari sa young men. Binigyan siya ng pardon. The pardon was sent to the prisoner with instructions to release him from prison. So daladala ng warden. When the warden told the young man about the pardon, the young man became very angry. And he said, I am guilty. I murdered another human being and I must die. But the warden replied, I have your pardon in my hand. No matter how the warden pleaded, the prisoner kept demanding to die. Not knowing what to do, the warden appealed to the judge. Kasi ayaw din ng warden na mag-violate siya ng batas. So pumunta siya sa judge to help him know what to do. The judge said, A pardon is not a pardon unless it is accepted. So the young man was executed. He had been completely forgiven for his sins against humanity and for his other most grievous crimes. So why did he die? Because a pardon is not a pardon unless it is accepted. God's gift of righteousness is unconditional. God's gift of righteousness is unending. But you can only experience it if you accept it. Accept Him tonight and you'll experience His unconditional and unending forgiveness and righteousness. To God be the glory.